Hello and welcome to chapter 10. This is Professor Farhat. We're working with making capital investment decision. Now, what matters is, as we talked about in the prior session, what matters to us is, remember, cash flow. Cash flow is what matters. So specifically, we want to look at cash flow. So before we get to the cash flow numbers, we need to prepare financial statements. So what does that mean? We need to prepare accounting financial statement and from the accounting financial statements we're going to get to our cash flow then from the cash flow which is that's what we needed we're going to work different techniques such as npv or irr or aar techniques that we worked earlier to figure out if the project is a good project or not as a good project so the the important point to remember is cash flow comes from accounting figures so the first thing you do is you want to prepare pro forma financial statements so what are the pro forma financial statement and how do they work we're going to look at them in a moment so we're going to prepare pro forma financial statement and convert it into cash flows so pro forma financial statements are a convenient and easily understood means of summarizing much of the relevant information for a project to prepare these statements, we will need estimates of quantities such as unit sales, selling price, variable cost, fixed cost, so on and so forth. So let's start with an example. Suppose we think that we can sell 50,000 cans of shark attractant per year at a price of $4 a can. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to prepare a pro forma income statement. So basically what we can do is we can sell 50,000, that's, that's what we are told, we can sell 50,000 cans at $4 a piece. So our total sales for this company is $200,000. What else are we given? It costs us about 250 per can to make the attractant and a new product such as this one typically have only a three year life, okay? So the variable cost is 250 per can. So now we can take 50,000 can times 2.5, and this is our variable cost. Now what we can do, sales minus variable cost, we can find our contribution margin, but they don't call it this in here, which is we're not going to call it contribution margin, but technically sales minus variable cost is called the contribution margin. Okay, so this is, so 200,000 minus 125 is 75. This is called contribution margin. Also, it's not written in your book. Um, that's fine, but this is, what is it called? Contribution margin 75 Let, let's see what else we are giving so we can complete this we require a 20 percent return on the product that's fine fixed cost for the project including such things as rent on the production facilities would run for twelve thousand dollar per year okay so fixed cost now we know the fixed cost is twelve thousand dollar per year that's the fixed cost now we need to figure out the information about the depreciation we will need to invest a total of 90,000 in manufacturing equipment. For simplicity, we will assume that this 90,000 will be 100% depreciated over three years. So that's easy. So we're gonna buy an asset. That's gonna cost us 90,000. We're gonna fully depreciate it over three years. So our depreciation expense per year equal to 30,000. So that's depreciation expense. And now from these figures, now we have the contribution margin minus the fixed cost, which is both fixed cost and depreciation is also considered a fixed cost. We can find what we learn about in chapter two, what we can find is earnings before interest and taxes. So let's take out 75,000 minus fixed cost minus depreciation. And that's gonna give us earnings before interest and taxes EBIT of 33,000. Now here, what, what do we need to do? We need to calculate our taxes and the tax rate is 34%, 0.34. That's our taxes. And what's left is EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, which is 33,000 minus the taxes. And that's gonna give us the bottom line, which is net income. So this is basically what I did, but I wanted to do it step by step because what's gonna happen, we're gonna work with these numbers eventually, okay? 
the cost of removing the equipment will be roughly equal to its to its actual value in three years so we don't get anything for the equipment if we can sell the equipment and get something back that's gonna that's gonna be relevant to us but it's not so it will be essentially worthless on the market because we can't sell the equipment for anything finally the project would require initial twenty thousand dollar investment in networking capital and the tax rate we are told it's 34 so we need networking capital equal to twenty thousand what does that mean it means we need twenty thousand dollar up front to work with this project that's that's basically what it means. I need twenty thousand dollar up front. Okay. So we organize the initial projection by first preparing the pro forma income statement, which I already did. Once again, notice that we have not deducted any interest expense. Remember, interest expense is a finance cost. Okay, is a finance cost, and as we described earlier, interest paid is a finance cost and not a component of operating cash flow. As is not a component of operating cash flow. It doesn't mean we're going to totally ignore it. We're just going to ignore it for now. What we're also going to do, we're going to also abbreviate a series of abbreviated balance sheet that shows the capital requirement for the project. And this is done in table 10-2. And let's examine table 10-2. Okay. Here we, ha we have a networking capital of $20,000 in each year. So notice we need $20,000 and it's going to stay with us each year. Fixed asset are $90,000 and they're going to go down every year. Why it's going to go down? Because remember, we're going to start with $90,000. That's the cost. Then every year we're going to subtract depreciation of $30,000. Therefore, after the first year, it's going to be $60,000. And this is where the depreciation is. The... Uh, cost of the asset then we're going to take sixty thousand and subtract thirty thousand of depreciation in year two and that's going to give us an asset of thirty thousand in year three what's left in the asset is thirty thousand minus thirty thousand of depreciation that's going to give us a book value of zero and what we said is the book value it's going to be gone okay but what's going to happen we're going to have what's left the networking capital will be twenty thousand dollars this is the networking capital so we're going to have the networking capital, but the fixed asset, we said it's going to be worthless. But notice, we need it to start the business. We need, we need it to start this project, 110000 This is what's needed. This is what's needed. And basically, what we can call this, this is the initial cost. This is the initial cost for this project. How much is it? $110,000. $20,000 in networking capital and $90,000 in net fixed asset okay now we have this information what we can do we are ready to convert the accrual accounting into actual cash flow so the first thing we learn in chapter two is how to convert uh, uh, the cash flow the projected cash flow equal the projected operating cash flow minus the projected change in networking capital minus the projected change in capital spending so those are some of the formulas we're going to be working with Projected operating cash flow, if you remember the formula, it's upper OCF is earnings before interest and taxes plus depreciation minus taxes. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to take this information and start to work starting with operating cash flow. What's operating cash flow? It's EBIT, which is, again, it's right here, OCF. Let me just, let's calculate OCF and get OCF out of the way because this is important for us. So this is, we learned this, this should be a review for you. OCF equal EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. So if we look at EBIT, we calculated EBIT to be 33,000. So this is the 33,000. Then we add depreciation. We add depreciation. Then we subtract the taxes. And we did this in the prior, in, again, in chapter two. So operating cash flow for year one, is $51,780. $51, pretty straightforward to cover. Uh, pretty straightforward to uh, to calculate. To calculate. Okay. Now, we next need to take care of the fixed asset and networking capital requirement. Based on the balance sheet, we know that we need twenty thousand in networking capital and ninety thousand in fixed asset. Therefore, we need an upfront cost of 110,000. Now basically we're, we're ready to go. Now we have everything that's needed for this project. And remember, we're gonna assume 20% required rate of return. So 
Now what we can, we can project the total cash flow for this project and see if this project adds value for the company. Let's summarize what we have. So this is basically we're back to an MPV evaluation or discounted cash flow evaluation. So at year zero, we need $20,000 in networking capital, 90,000 in capital spending. So we need an upfront cost of 110. Then year one, we're gonna have a cash flow of 51,780, which is we calculated above. Year two, 51,780. Year three, 51,780 plus the networking capital, as I said, we're going to have a release of networking capital, therefore we can sell it. Now all we have to do now is basically calculate the net present value giving a 20% required rate of return. So basically we're going to start with negative 110,000, then we're going to take each cash flow, the 51,780, discounted at 20, 1 divided by 20%, the second 51,780, discounted 1.2 raised to the second power and the third year we're going to have a total of 71,780 discounted at 1.1 raised to the third power when we discount all of those they're going to be 10,648 in excess of 110 so again this project would create value for the company it will add value of 10,648 based on the projection on this projection, the project create over 10,000 in value and should be accepted. Obviously, it should be accepted. Also, the return on this investments obviously exceed 20%. Why? Because the MPV is positive at 20%. It means the project has more return than 20%. This is what we can say because at 20%, we're positive. If we work some trial and error, so if you want to do, you can find out that the IRR for this project, the internal rate of return, is 25.8. And obviously... 20% it's going to give you a positive MPV because it's less than the IRR in addition if we require if required we could calculate the payback and the average accounting period which is the AAR inspection of the cash flow show that the payback on this project is 2.1 years and hopefully this is what we learned in the prior session you know how to calculate the payback period 2.1 year because it's going to take us two years obviously to recover the cash and one 2.1 years and a little bit over a little bit over two years 2.1 uh, also we could calculate the A AAR is the average net income divided by the average book value the income is uh, the income each year is 21,780 remember when you calculate AAR you use accounting net income not cash flow accounting so the average basically you will take all three divided by three the average of the of the end of the four book value the total investments 180 50 and 20 divided by 4 will give you 65,000 so you'll take 21,780 divided by 60 65,000 it's going to get you 33 33.51 percent if you're wondering where these numbers are coming from the 110 the, the 80 the 50 and the 20 by all means go back to your balance sheet that we created right here this is the 110 this is the 80, the 50, and the 20. So you just take all four total investments and divide them by four, in case you're wondering where these numbers are coming from. So notice here, the AAR is 33.51, but the internal rate of return is about 26. And this tells us that the IRR, AAR is much larger than the IRR, which is that's why we say AAR is, is not really a good measure. What we really want to look at is MPV, IRR. Those are the good two measure of the uh, two good measures of the project, but this project is profitable. So what we did in this example, we went from an income statement and we converted the income statement. What we did is we find OCF, operating cash flow, and what's operating cash flow? It's taking EBIT, starting with EBIT, taking EBIT, 33,000, adding to a depreciation, then subtracting the taxes, finding the cash flow which was around 51,000 51,780 51,780 51,780 and what we did is we discounted the cash flow including don't forget about the net working capital the last year so hopefully this will this is a this is an application of taking accrual converting accrual into a cash flow to make a decision about the project and this project was a go.
So the next session, what we look at is we're going to look more about the uh, the cash flow. We're going to look at closer look at networking capital. OK, and we're going to look maybe a closer look at depreciation. How does depreciation help? If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class.